In this video of the Socially Charged Life of Language Part 2, we will talk about terminologies including linguistic and linguistic anthropology and discuss different perspectives on understanding language. For the purpose of further understanding the topics to be discussed, it is important to distinguish the difference between linguistic and linguistic anthropology. Linguistics Linguistics refers to the analytical study of language to reveal its structure, the different kinds of language units, its sounds, smallest meaningful part of words, and so on, and the rules according to which these units are put together to produce stretches of speech. Most linguists adhere to the popular view that language is largely a set of labels that can be placed on the pre-existing concepts, objects, or relationships. In this way of thinking, language is defined as a conduit that merely conveys information without adding or changing anything of substance. Linguistic Anthropology Understanding linguistic anthropology requires prior knowledge of what anthropology is. According to Britannica, anthropology is the science of humanity, which studies human beings in aspects ranging from the biology and evolutionary history of Homo sapiens to the features of society and culture that decisively distinguish humans from the other animal species. Because of the diverse subject matter it encompasses, anthropology has become, especially since the middle of the 20th century, a collection of more specialized fields. One of these subfields is linguistic anthropology. Linguistic anthropologists argue that human production of talk and text made possible by the unique human capacity for language is a fundamental mechanism through which people create culture and social life. The fundamental principle for a linguistic anthropologist is that language is inherently social. It is not just a means through which we act upon the social world. Speaking is itself a form of social action and the language is a cultural resource available for people to use. Linguistic anthropologists, therefore, maintain that the essence of language cannot be understood without reference to the particular social context in which it is used. Other Terminologies there are other terminologies which are interrelated to the two previous terms discussed. One of these is social linguistics. Social linguistics is the study of the sociological aspects of language. The discipline concerns itself with the part language plays in maintaining the social roles in a community. Social linguistics attempt to isolate those linguistic features that are used in particular situations and that mark the various social relationships among the participants and the significant elements of the situation. One more terminology that is closely related to the first three is anthropological linguistics. Britannica defines anthropological linguistics as the study of the relationship between language and culture. It usually refers to the work on languages that have no written records. You may have noticed that these terms greatly intercepts the very scope of linguistic anthropology. But Britannica also notes that just as it is difficult to draw the boundary between linguistics and psycholinguistics and between psychology and psycholinguistics, so it is difficult to distinguish sharply between linguistics and social linguistics and between social linguistics and sociology. There is the further difficulty that, because the boundary between sociology and anthropology is also unclear,
social linguistics merges with anthropological linguistics. What do you need to know in order to know a language? Understanding language vary depending on the perspective you are looking into. One view is based on the linguistic perspective while the other is through the lens of linguistic anthropologies. Linguist's Perspective Linguist perspectives are best captured on the idea of two prominent linguists, Noam Chomsky and Ferdinand de Saussure. Noam Chomsky is an American theoretical linguist whose work from the 1950s revolutionized the field of linguistics by treating language as a uniquely human, biologically based cognitive capacity. Through his contributions to linguistics and related fields, including cognitive psychology and the philosophies of mind and language, Chomsky helped to initiate and sustain what came to be known as the Cognitive Revolution. Ferdinand de Saussure is a Swiss linguist whose ideas on the structure in language laid the foundation for much of the approach to and the progress of the linguistic sciences in 20th century. Linguists generally use a Chomskyan distinction between competence, the abstract and usually unconscious knowledge that one has about the rules of a language, and performance, the putting into practice, sometimes imperfectly, of those rules. The Saussure made a similar distinction between lang, the language system in the abstract, and parole, everyday speech. This distinction is partly analogous to the way a person might have abstract knowledge about how to knit a sweater, but in the actual knitting of it, might drop a stitch here or there, or perhaps make the arms a bit shorter than necessary. In both the Chomskyan and Saussurean approaches, it is the abstract knowledge of a language system, competence or lang, that is of primary, or even sole, interest for a science of language. Performance or parole is irrelevant. While this analogy of language with meeting is not by any means a perfect one, it does nevertheless demonstrate how narrowly Chomsky and most other linguists view language. Other practices such as playing music, dancing, or painting would work equally well in the analogy because meeting and all these other practices are, like language, socially embedded and culturally influenced. Of course, there are abstract cognitive and biological dimensions to anything that we as humans do, including language. But to reduce language solely to these dimensions, as Chomsky and others do when they claim that they are interested only in competence and not in performance, is to miss the richness and complexity of one of the most fundamental aspects of human existence. This will lead us on the perspective of the linguistic anthropologist. Linguistic Anthropologist Perspective Linguistic anthropologies, therefore, reject the Chomskyan, Saussurean distinction between competence or lang and performance or parole, though they do so in various ways. 
some deny the existence of any distinction at all between competence and performance or lang and parole, while others give primacy to performance or parole. Still, others expand the definition of competence to include the ability to use language skillfully and appropriately in particular social contexts, and many view competence and performance, lang and parole, as equally important. What all linguistic anthropologies agree upon, however, is that to know a language, one must know far more than an abstract set of grammatical rules. Further discussion on this anthropologist view of language will further be discussed on the next topic. According to Sipolyon and his colleagues, there are five basic components of a language that can be studied and one must master all five of these areas in order to know a language. Phonology the study of sound in language. In order to know a language, one must be able to recognize and produce the sounds, phonemes that are meaningful in that language. Morphology, the study of the internal structure of words. In order to know a language, one must be able to use suffixes, prefixes, or infixes, depending on the language. Syntax, the study of the structure of sentences including the construction of phrases, clauses, and the order of words. In order to know a language, one must be able to combine subjects, verbs, and objects in a grammatically correct way. Semantics, the study of meaning in language, including analysis of the meanings of words and sentences. In order to know a language, one must know how to construct and interpret meanings. Pragmatics, the study of language use of actual utterances of how meanings emerged in actual social contexts. This includes culturally and linguistically specific ways of structuring narratives, performances, or everyday conversations. In order to know a language, one must be able to use language in socially and culturally appropriate ways. Indeed, linguistic anthropologists consider phonology, morphology, and syntax to be so fundamentally affected by the social context in which these aspects of language are acquired and used that to consider them in isolation from these contexts is at best artificial and at worst inaccurate. For the linguistic anthropologist, every aspect of language is socially influenced and culturally meaningful. To use language, therefore, is to engage in a form of social action laden with cultural values. And that ends the discussion for this topic. Thank you and please do not forget to like and subscribe on this channel.